show is Conversations, and we are going to be speaking to a whole lot of people that help us rejuvenate, call them youth, and you won't be wrong. Nigeria is 63, and we are celebrating and still counting. Usually, it is said that uh, the strength of a nation is in the do uh, doorstep of the youth. We also know that these youth are supposedly uh, future leaders. So it's important issues around them are showcased and discussed. And so we're laying it right here on the table, especially when it comes to economic factors. We know that uh, our youths are talented, they are gifted, but are we making use of it? I don't know. But I know that sitting here with a bunch of uh, very intelligent ladies with me, we're going to find out whether we're harnessing the potentials of our youth enough to make our nations look and feel better. My name is Elizabeth and the show is Conversations. Let me quickly let my uh, team members introduce themselves. Hello. Hi, my name is Deva Hamati, your mom, and it's good to be here. I'm wondering why are you rocking teeth today? I just wanted to celebrate my people. <laughs> It's good. You should have told me so that I can wear my ikbikbogo. No, but you've tried. At least there's a bit of you know, embe embellishment on Abeba your sleeves okay. that, you know. Okay. Yeah, you know, this. our traditional dance, we go like this. So, showing strength, you yeah. know, velo and all that. Okay, that's uh, what that means. That's Abeba. Yes, when okay. you dance like this, you're shaking your biceps. Okay. You know, it shows you. Can so, it's a fight. show of strength. Nice. All right. Nice so that's why we're called the warriors. Okay. <laughs> that's a story for another day. But <laughs> good morning. My name is Maimuna Umi uh, Abdullah, aka Coach Didi. I'm good. It's nice to be here. All right. We have a new face in in this room, but definitely not on NT. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. My name is Princess Zahra Mustafa. I'll do um, APC Zona Woman Leader, not Central, and also General Businesswoman. Um, I own. EMVC, the one of the foremost electric motor vehicle companies in Nigeria, and um, we do a bit of real estate construction as well. All right, very importantly, that's one of the reasons why uh, we had to ensure that she come and join us because it's uh, something we've been looking forward to having, you know, across Nigeria and between her and her husband, they are actually getting it started and running for a while now. We get to talk about it a whole lot, but just before then, let's take a break and get to find out uh, what Nigerians are doing to make us proud, especially as we mark this birthday. Have you noticed that globally, in every category, young Nigerians tend to stand out in diverse fields of life? From music to movies, technology, fashion, the list is endless. Perhaps in the entertainment industry, a lot of us can identify such talents. But do you know that? There are even greater number of young, talented Nigerians in other fields. Why don't you let me show you a little? Jermaine and Hansel Undo KK are brothers, tech entrepreneurs and co-founders of Weville Company, an organization that focuses on data analysis and digital change. In 2023, they were both named in Forbes Africa's 30 on the 30 list. Ayomide Akron is a secondary school student and the founder of Pink Diva Organization, an organization that makes Nigeria's recycling system safer and also provides reusable parts for young girls with special needs and in rural areas. Toby Amuson is a sprinter who also specializes in the 100-meter hurdles as a track and field athlete. She is the reigning African Commonwealth and World Champion in the 100-meter hurdles as well as the meet record holder for these three competitions. Abubakar Adam Ibrahim is a critically recognized author and journalist who has worked for the Daily Trust and written novels and short story collections. Blessing Abeng is the co-founder and director of communications at Ingressive for Good, I4G, an initiative that assists African youth in gaining access to opportunities. Suleiman Yusuf is the CEO of Blue Camel Energy Limited, a graduate of Bayero University, Kanu. 
He left his job with the federal government of Nigeria to become an entrepreneur that delivers alternative energy solutions to Nigerians. Currently, he has over 400 young Nigerians under his employment. Faiza Atu Muhammad is a lawyer and writer. She recently won an essay competition for young Africans held by Tanzania's U Ugonzi Institute. The topic of the essay competition was, if you were an African leader, how would you promote intra-African trade to unlock agricultural potentials in Africa? Michelle Alozi is an American-born footballer who plays for the Nigerian women's national team. She also holds a medical degree and works part-time as a cancer research technician. Tosin Oshinowo is an architect, designer, and author. Her designs are rooted in a deep appreciation for Yoruba culture and history. Her works are appreciated and embraced world over. Splendor Kalu is a 19-year-old student who is dedicated to providing digital skills to youngsters in remote places through his business. Communities will connect. Through his initiative, several unprivileged young Nigerians are experiencing the good taste and benefits of digital skills. Nigerians are hungry for excellence in all that we do. That burning hunger dwells even more in the youths. However, are we doing enough to harness it in Nigeria today? Let's get back to the studio for answers. If you're just joining us, the show is Conversation and we're just starting. Now you know that Nigerians are doing us proud. Come to music, movie, technology, fashion, and recently a whole lot around CT, ICT. They are doing us real proud. But I'm still wondering, are we, you know, doing enough? I don't know. Do you think we're using our, you know, strength in the youth enough? Uh, no, I, don't, I really don't think so. What, 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 where, where are we not getting it right? I think it starts even from, not are you talking about the nation or as a people? Or as, everything? A people as a people, are we redeploying the strength of our youth? Uh, I really don't think so. Uh, but I, th I think we can do much better because even as parents, I th most of us, we just don't give them enough credit. I think, I don't know whether it's the generation because we don't trust them enough, but we don't put them out there. The, the kids of today are so entitled. Everything falls on their laps. They, they want everything, every good thing in life. They should have it, but they don't believe they should earn it. Hmm. So why is that coming from? I think it's from the homes. Because when we raise children who don't f understand consequences, they don't understand the, the pride from earning in a halal manner, what do we expect? We have kids who just want to blow, whatever that means. <laughs> I want to blow. There was a time my son kept that blowing matter so, for so long. I want to blow, I want to blow. You want to blow, fantastic. What do you need to do to blow? Mm -hmm. Because all they think about is success. All they see is success. They see it on social media. Success, success, success. Not about anything, about hard work, you know? Integrity, consequences of actions. They, everybody wants to just get away with everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can do anything, but they should find a way to get away with it. And I think it comes from us as a people and as a nation. There are no consequences. Okay, you know, um, I the... The women leader here, not central APC precisely. I know at a point you were also a leader for the youth, right? You know. Um, so before you I joined, yeah. Mm -hmm. So before I joined um, the AP, I've, I've always been a member of the um, APC as a political party. But before I was elected into office, I was part of a group called the Progressive Youth Movement, and I was part of the leadership of that group. And the whole idea behind that was basically. Um, you know, speaking up for young people, bringing young people to the forefront and saying that it's time that we're more involved in politics, governance, and basically involved in every sphere of Nigeria, you know, not just sitting back, but we have a lot to offer. And I'll be honest with you, some points I agree with you, some I don't. I feel that how the Nigerian, the younger generation in Nigeria have actually held Nigeria up for a very long time in the sense of, if you take, for instance, um, I personally, I feel like the odds are against them whether it's in the music industry, whether it's in the actors and actresses in the Nollywood industry, technology, which is a major um, 
source of income for Nigeria, which mm. is being spearheaded mainly Definitely. by young people. Do you understand? Even if you take it back as far as politics, within the APC, the strength of our party has always been the younger generation. So I don't feel, what I feel is lacking is that how dear, Am I good? Good. So yeah. what I feel is lacking more than anything is that how maybe the younger generation in Nigeria are not fully appreciated. We haven't fully, I mean, what you need to understand is that majority of our population are under the age of 40, according to statistics yeah, anyway, true. majority true. of our population. So it also, um, it also means that how, yes, we have a lot of people doing great, but we also have a lot of people not doing so great. But the ones that are doing great are what is holding our country firm today. Mm -hmm. Everywhere where we excel, say for instance in music, all under 40, yes, right? True. In the mu uh, movie industry, all under 40. In fact, once you're over 40, you're kind of starting to exit that market. Technology, all under 40. True. And these are the areas where we truly excel as a country. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Even so the, the fashion industry. Fashion well. industry. Mm -hmm. Majority under 40. And these are the sectors where we truly excel. The sectors that we've had problems as a nation prior to this administration, because I know you're going to notice a lot of positive change, simply because the renewed hope administration is built fundamentally on young people, on women and these are the people that are going to take the forefront of leadership and you're going to definitely see changes, not immediately, but over a prolonged period of time. So I, I feel that how the value that the younger Nigerians have added to Nigeria has been underestimated simply because our own way of assessing success is different. You have to have 10 cars, you have to have 10 houses, you have to be able to fly all over the world before you're deemed successful. So those people who have, who are the elders who have been opportuned to be maybe in power and have actually even taken resources from the country are celebrated more than the young people who against all odds have managed to excel in their areas of fi or field or whatever it is mm -hmm. they're doing. So if you look at it, if you look at the, for me, when you want to judge something, you have to look at the parameters, right? If, if you're going to judge A and B, then mm -hmm. A and B need to be in like situations. True. Do you understand what I mean? If not, if I have a head start, say for instance, I'm going into a race with a two-year-old, what do you expect? You win. Who do you expect to win the race? You. The odds are against the two-year-old. That's exactly the situation that has been prior to this administration for the younger generation. They haven't been... They, um, how do I their, 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 um, their ability or full potential has not been harnessed, has not been embraced, has not been celebrated. We have always celebrated the corrupt politicians who have somehow found their way into power, have made so much money, and what's the value that's being added? So I want us to celebrate those who have added value, regardless of what, you know, how much money they have, how successful it looks like on paper. You know what I mean? Because I, for me, I believe they're still getting there. But rather than celebrating the material things that people have ac acquired, why don't we celebrate the accomplishments, the value they are adding to Nigeria? Even in the sports industry, we haven't touched on that. Most times when we celebrate as a nation, it's because our boys are maybe they're playing football or our ladies are playing football or basketball and they're excelling. This has, this has been one of the few things that has brought us together, you know, as a nation. Mm -hmm. so now, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, from your perspective, um, you seem to um, think that there is uh, hope for the young people, uh, what you call the, the renewed hope for the young people now. Now, uh, judging from what we see in the body elected and, uh, and um, you know, select and not selected, appointed, um, do you think that uh, the youth, uh, you know, Rep well represented well this is the first time everything in life is a gradual process this is the first time in my understanding of nigeria's history during democracy that we've actually had this number of young ministers in a cabinet i am hopeful that they would add value because putting young people and putting competent young people those are two different things but at this stage i want to be optimistic that every single young person who has been appointed say for instance as a minister would add value to the Renewed Hope Administration and would be a good brand ambassador to enable more young people get future opportunities like that. Because if they misuse it, then automatically maybe it closes the door. If they use it properly, guess what? It opens the door for more young people. So this is what I'm hoping for. And I believe, I strongly believe that how 
this particular administration led by President Bola Ahmed Chinubu is determined to make a difference in Nigeria. And the only way to make a difference in Nigeria is to engage more young people. It's just, it's, it's the reality. Majority of the Nigerians are young and youthful. The world is fast advancing. In fact, every other part of the world, besides maybe Africa, mm -hmm. you know, has embraced younger leadership and, I think and that's it's why added value to them because you see, we're talking you're, that's why values are important you're talking about a percentage of nigerian youth how many of the youth are in the music industry how many of the youth are in the movie industry true how many how many of them okay, are in politics we're we talking about a percentage a very minute percentage and for those people who even go into these industries how do they even get into it my son was actually into music and believe me i was unhappy about it you were and unhappy i was unhappy Why? because believe me if you know the culture of the music industry of, in nigeria is drugs oh. the culture of the music industry in nigeria it's about drugs it's about truancy it's promiscuity not it's, not it's not even a nigeria thing I, I'm, I'm not, no, i don't want to go out there because i don't know how they go about it there but in nigeria you know, I'm not saying every child, I'm not saying every musician is a drug, and that's not what I'm saying. But the culture of your music, music industry is basically laced with drugs, partying, drinking, and everything. So I wasn't I, happy I, about I also it. know that it's not all of them that do that. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Already, I said the culture. Yes. Yes. That's the culture. So when your child is going into the music industry, you don't feel at peace. I was worried because most of the, he told me that when he goes to the site, he, who, who he sees there and what they do there. So I wasn't actually comfortable about that. I'm not now. We, it's not just about these people. Yes, yeah, some of them have been successful, and of course, we're so proud of them. But I'm talking about the majority of Nigerians who are not in the music industry, who are not in politics, who are just there. What's our culture? We, we don't have a culture of believing in the country. Mm -hmm. There's it's every man on his own, it's about blowing. I'm talking about creating a culture of value system. What can you do for Nigeria? What can you give back to Nigeria? How can we make Nigeria better? You and know, that stems from us as parents. Wh wh why you why wh why you speak on that? I keep thinking, what is the problem? Because you say a whole lot of them are just there. Yeah, I, I definitely has had opportunity of working in different communities when you were moving around with the NGOs. I'm wondering, with your exposure and relationship with the young people, what is it really that is you know more like um, covering them from you know exposing their talent because do we have talent? Yes. I know that because I work a whole lot with young people. And um, when I give them free will, which is quite often, I see a lot of expressions that come in. Sometimes it's mind-blowing. They're actually educating in a whole lot of things. So what is stopping us from really using it? What is stopping them sometimes from actually bringing this on the table for the growth of a nation? I wish I could put a finger on it, but I can't. And it's sad. Nigeria's population of out-of-school youth is very high at the moment. Very, very high. And sadly, this is at a time when we have one of the world's biggest resources, which is young people. Do you know that certain countries have such a high aging population with sure. no young people coming up that sure. in another 20 or 30 years, they Th those countries might not exist. And this is because over time, they sold this message of overpopulation so much that people bought into it hook, line, and sinker, one. Two, standard of living was so expensive that having even one child became a problem. Three, women are being pushed to be neck and neck with men in the outside the home. So the man goes to work, he's closing at 8, 9 p.m. The woman also goes to work and is closing at 8, 9 p.m. This need for equality, while it is, in terms of social justice, is a good concept, in practical reality, it doesn't really help. So one of the biggest resources one of the most valuable resources we have in nigeria is being allowed to go to waste because we're not building up them up to be what they could be to prop our country up properly now you find that some of the people who were able to access power and therefore help themselves keyword some 
help themselves to the nation's coffers. So. Have put themselves in a position where they make sure that their children access the best possible education there is anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And then those children come back and continue from where daddy left off. To the detriment of the larger population that is actually propping the country up. Now, some of us had the privilege of growing up during the military era. So we can compare what was happening during the military and what is happening no. in democracy. No. Both have their good and bad. But I can tell you that the Nigeria that existed during the military era is not the Nigeria we're dealing with today. Sure. During the military, identity politics was almost non-existent. Sure. During the military, even religion, yeah, religion was not a big deal. It didn't play a role. It didn't play a role. People Nobody related, yes. really cared. You know, it was when, you know, APC presented a Muslim Muslim ticket and then I now cast my mind back. MQ Abiola and, Abiola and uh, King Gibi, No, right? that's even different. MQ Abiola, that was still a democratic process, mm -hmm. you know, and people welcomed it at the time. But at that time, we were coming away from the military era where the president will be a Muslim his vice, so to speak, or the head of state, mm -hmm. and his vice will be Muslims. And most Christians didn't notice. Yeah. Even because the that, wasn't, notice. that wasn't an issue at Even the time. It wasn't an issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared. Because when, the, when, when they are giving you a military administrator, nobody is checking his religion or his whatever. They would take somebody from Igbo land and go and put him as military administrator of Benue State. Mm -hmm. So the Idoma and the Igede and the Tif people, they don't have even enough energy to start complaining that it's because he's from this tribe. That's why he did it. You know, so pff, let me not delve into history. Democracy has come with its own good and bad. Now, the main bad I've noticed about democracy is the tendency for politicians to want to use young people for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Enter literally any political party and go and check the group called youth. It's not even youth, though. Youth. <laughs> hmm? She is saying the youth have prepped up the... Yes, because at crunch time, when politicians want to get nasty, and I'm not saying every politician gets nasty, but those that want to get nasty, it's the youth they rely on yes, yes. to go out, make trouble, beat people up, carry arms, fight, kill each other and things. And then when they get authority and become that state governor or whatever, usually state governor, Nadia and I, the problem is that you become governor. When you are struggling to get there, you armed so many youth. There's a proliferation of small weapons everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now you're governor. How are you going to collect those weapons back? Really wonder. Then before you know it, armed robbery, That's kidnappings, mm -hmm. abductions, insecurity all over the place. How do you walk back from there? I've even heard of instances where prisoners are released just for, uh, just for at election time to cause problem and things. Mm -hmm. Really? If, yes. If you think that I'm exaggerating, go and look which, 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 which since 1999, maybe after since after 20, after 2003, which election has been without violence. extreme violence in certain parts? You think it's just a coincidence? As a matter of fact, each time there is going to be an election, some people will tell you, oh, you need to travel, you yeah. need to move out, because there's going to be war, there's going to be this. And I'm always advoca I advocating for peace. And I tell them, I'm staying put wherever I am, because I know nothing is going to happen. No, it's our country the, the, and the point I'm trying to make is, instead of utilizing the youth mm -hmm. for some selfish gain, mm -hmm. why don't we empower them such that for instance, now, so many of them are out of school. Mm. But the fact that you are not literate doesn't mean you are automatically a useless person. True. What are we doing to empower them so that, w to empower them with new skills regarding agriculture? Because many, 70% of our population is in the rural areas. So in the rural, the rural areas also is where you find the dominant population of young people. Mm -hmm. To avoid urban migration, what are we doing so that even where they are in their localities, they can be useful to themselves and to the society? But Why are we not helping them to become... I something about this empowerment of youth? 
since 1999, as I can remember, we've, they've had so many programs, youth empowerment, youth lip empowerment. Lip service. It's not just lip service, because from even one, the ones I have been, uh, I have noticed, I've not been a part of it, but I've seen people be part of it. When they are empowered and they are given uh, th those skills and they are given machineries, they sell it right there. Is that right. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's spirit of right so you see, the thing is, it's not about empowering them with skills. I think it's a mindset shift that we need. I, I the mindset that tells you that you don't, you don't, really, it's government thing, it's for government, let me just go and sell it. Why don't we empower the minds to believe in themselves, to believe that they can actually create something out of nothing? Mm -hmm. Why do we have to keep bottle feeding everyone? I don't, I don't know, maybe you can help. I think for me, several things that she said are absolutely on point, but one thing that we must never um, even mention, talk less of even. Um, uh, what's it called, embellish in any way, is the military administration. This is something that everyone who is enjoying democracy should never wish for, should never even refer to in any positive light, to be honest with you. The reason why back in the day, I mean, I'm, I may not be as old, I may not have really experienced the military administration so much, but common sense tells you that during the military, leadership was forced on you. You did not have a choice. You dare not complain who your head of state was. You dare not complain who his deputy was. You dare not complain who the military administrators in the state were because the approach was different. This is the beauty of democracy. You can get up today and say anything about the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Anything. Mm -hmm. Literally, we've had it all. Really a good no, thing I that want you to can explain say something. Anything? No, I want to explain something to you. Mm. You can say it. And your life will not be at risk. Really? You would still, yes, you would still be a free human being walking. Your family would still be free enough to be able to go about their day to day. You couldn't do that. You can't do that during the military administration. Definitely. The fear alone, the, the television station will not air it. The newspapers will not carry it. Mm -hmm. If you find a way to do it by yourself, even if you go into hiding, your family will be called to question. So these are things we shouldn't take, we shouldn't even joke about, we shouldn't even mention in passing in any kind of positive light, simply because this is not something. In fact, Nigeria's democracy is something to be highly celebrated. No matter how difficult our elections have been, no matter the power tussle, it's still been, there has still been a level of equity involved in determining the kind of leadership that we have whether we like it or not the people have had a say one way or the other mm. it's simply been survival of the fittest if we want to be honest no politician is holier than the other this is the reality of it right i've done both i'm very active in the business world i'm extremely active in the political sector and i can tell you categorically a lot of people who are business people who haven't ventured into politics it's not because they're so much better than the politicians who are there it's that it takes guts to be a politician in yeah. Nigeria. And this is the reality of it. It's extremely Must difficult. Must it be that way? Well, it's, I'm, I, I said this is the reality. reality. I didn't say this is how I wish it was. This is how it should be. I'm saying this is the reality of it. It's more difficult. And then we compare ourselves to democracies that are like... Over 100 years Over 100 years old. old. We're just going to be 63 years old. Let's understand that. That's just the truth. Even in America, at some point, it was survival of the fittest when, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's been like that across the entire world. So it's only a matter of time. And one thing for me, this is more a personal thing. I think we need to, as Nigerians, start to highlight and celebrate all the positive things that we have going for us. I wanted to ask you a question. If I ask you now, off the top of your head, to tell me five Nigerians who have made us proud internationally, five, you'd find that maybe three or four out of that five will be under the age of 40. This is our youth. They are the best ambassadors for our country. They are the ones who are taking this message out there. Yes, we have a long way to go, but guess what? i rather look as, at the cup as half full than half empty. It's, you know, at the same, it's at the same level as you're seeing it, but I tell you, there's so much positivity. I can assure you, this is something I, I've never been more confident about a political lead. I've never been more confident about an elected president as the way I feel about Asiwaju Bola Ametimu. And it shows from day one, he came in with a direction. And this is not a president that you hear there's an issue and he's taking the backstage and saying, oh, I'll send A or I'll send B. This is someone who's proactive. This is someone who you've seen. 
okay. step by step um, has I have gone. To, oh. I have to mm. respond to that because okay. I don't know where you got the impression that I'm glorifying the military rule. Mm -hmm. I made a comparison. And you I recall said you saying saw that some positive things. Yes, there were. There were. But hang on. With regard to how the youth were being used at the time, we're talking about youth. Mm -hmm. During the military administration, I didn't see youth being given weapons to During go the out and During the military administration, war. the majority of the military people were young. That's when we had some of the youngest leadership. Yeah. And guess what? How did they get into power? For you to become a military administrator, you have to kill. Yes? There were coups. The coups were designed to eliminate whoever was in charge at that point in time to take over. That was the order. Was there anything different? You have to take out the head and then you become. Okay. Well, for the avoidance of doubt. So they I'm were not, killing. No, for, the they were killing. Uh, for the avoidance they were young of and doubt. They had the guns. For the, avoidance, the guns. for the avoidance of doubt, I'm not saying I want the military back because there's a rash of coups across exactly. West Africa right that's now. Why I that's had not to touch what on I, that. I think that's what you that's heard. Why that I was had not to what touch I was saying. No, I didn't hear that. I heard that. For me, all I'm saying is that how there is nothing positive about the military it's not something that can even be entertained even I, in passing anyway, well for now, me you know there why? was a clear now difference a between what was going on with youth back then and now there was a clear <laughs> <difference>. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so anyway we don't know democracy has its good and for me the military also had some bit of good i, I think cannot, that, I, think, I, I don't think believe I in to get, uh, blanket the, the, the condemnation we're not asking uh, agitating for military to come back come back not here. at all you know but not i know that uh, you were saying that uh, at the time just like uh, the time of um Abiola and uh, his vice yeah, yeah. you yeah. know yeah. it was a uh, muslim muslim and nobody noticed them. exactly so i was actually so, trying to make a so point like, uh, at a point we those things didn't play a role yes so those why would it play a role now i yes. mean that so the, I, it's I a was christian the point christian or muslim muslim one of the reasons why the MQ Abiola and Kingibe tickets was, ac was accepted was because we were already kind of used to it from that time when we didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. We were already kind of True. used to it. So when we even had a choice, it still it didn't, didn't matter. matter. Yeah. Okay. It really didn't matter. But over time, identity politics, right. both with religion and ethnic whatever whatever, there's so much tension, there's so much fighting, there's so many small small ethnic clashes here and there. Mm. My state's is embroiled in herdsmen and farmer clashes all the time. It's okay. We'll continue you know, with this topic, so but uh, let's quickly take a break. When we come back, uh, briefly, we'll be still discussing this time around, sector by sector. And I want to begin with uh, the electric car sector as the uh, technology. Get to find out how much we can take out from the youth and build our nation thus. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can watch ATA Inter Your window to the world. All right, this show is conversation and it's been really heated. Uh, talks about how to ensure that our youths get to contribute meaningfully to the nation's, uh, you know, development. And uh, talking about that, I want to particularly pick up uh, technology. You've been talking for quite a while, Princess Zara, and um, I know that uh, you're also technologically inclined. You're an engineer or something? I'm a software engineer by training. Oh, yes. wow. I didn't even know. Yes. Good I asked. And I'm wondering, that's one area the youths are all gone into, and you're doing something quite nice. The electric car? Electric vehicles, yes. Okay. So How viable are those in Nigeria? By the way. Well, they are. They are being embraced, not just even by the private sector, even the public sector, because obviously with the fuel subsidy remo removal, there's been, op everyone is looking for an alternative um, solution to, you know, affordable transportation. I mean, for instance, if you used to dri if you drive a land cruiser or whatever to fuel your car is about 80,000. Mm. I'm going based on what I do. And then other people tell me on average, they're fueling for like 60 something thousand. So it's costing a lot. So people are looking for alternative options for getting around of course you have to get to work you have to take your kids to school and all of that so we have different models of electric vehicles one of the major ones that we've been pushing is the we have the electric version of the kikina pep but ours is a bit different because it has like doors um, and you know windows and 
internal air cooling system and all of that. So it's designed so that even the middle income, yes, so that even the middle income people can actually embrace it as opposed to just looking down on it and thinking it's for, you know, the less privileged people. We also have the, um, the smaller electric cars, which we designed for the last mile solution, because initially our concept was, um, we started this whole electric car stuff even before the fuel subsidy removal was taken out. So it came into Nigeria very slowly. So we tried to target um, the public sector and public transportation, you know, because they have like unions and stuff. So it's easier to get a buy-in from a large group of people. Mm -hmm. So the initial cars we had were designed for the last mile solutions like taxis and the Kekena peps to replace the existing ones. Mm -hmm. We're also venturing, which our first set of um, electric buses are coming in. Basically what we do at the moment is we assemble locally um, because you know manufacturing from scratch now in Nigeria is quarter to impossible, especially if you want to enter the market <coughs> on a large scale and you want to actually become a major player, not just somebody who's producing one or two. So, um, like I said, we're still targeting the public means of transportation and we haven't really gone too much into pers personal Car. vehicles for people because that would involve buying one or two cars at a time. So we're looking for, you know, because we're a young company, we need people that can buy in bulk and then it makes it easier for us to also um, you know, manufacture them. for okay, them. Okay, now in all you do, I know that um, uh, software engineering is something that um, a lot of young people are going in for. I'm wondering how much of participation are the young people contributing to what you do, your, your young organization? Um, obviously, the whole entire organization is filled with young people. Obviously, if you want something is headed by a young person, you would automatically embrace people within your age bracket or below. It's a natural, it's a natural gravitation. So yes, um, in terms of design, concept modeling, because of course, Nigeria is peculiar. So what works in another country will not necessarily work in Nigeria. So some of the things that some of the things that we've had to evolve into is rather than having a charging station, which will be very impossible to put all over, we've designed ours so we can have a battery swap system mm -hmm. so we've made the batteries accessible so you can literally take it out charge it in your house or you can have a replacement battery so while one is charging you're driving the other one so we've we've tried to um customize our stuff to fit locally what works in nigeria i mean we had some of the first set of vehicles we had were in lagos we have a branch in lagos too and some of the issues that they brought to our attention was that during the raining season because Lagos gets really flooded, mm. that the water found a way to penetrate within. So these are things that we keep evolving based on the unique um, concepts within Nigeria. And of course, all of that, all of that process is being spearheaded and engineered by young people. These are the people who are testing. These are the people who are giving us the ideas. You know, redesigning and remodeling uh, the vehicles to suit the Nigerian market. Okay. Yeah, but talking about suiting the Nigerian market. Um, don't you think that going into electrical cars is a bit of a, um, what, I'm looking for the word, a well, conundrum, so to speak, especially for a country that struggles with electricity? A lot of people thought that. In fact, to be honest with you, the former Minister of Science and Technology, Ogunaonu, the first time we took the concept to him on paper, he was like, how can you do that in a country that doesn't have electricity? But we have phones, we have television, we have, it takes the same kind of power to charge an electric vehicle. You have your mobile phones, you're communicating, you have your laptops that you yeah. use for work, you have, it's exactly the same mode of charging. So but I think the more critical question- Wouldn't a car require so much more? No, it like, doesn't, that's, that's, yeah. just, that's just the, that's what people assume, but it really doesn't. The average charging time for an electric vehicle is six hours. Oh wow! Yes. So that's while I'm sleeping, you the job. That's for a full charge. So and how long does the full charge take? And typically, if you're if you're saying in if you're saying in kilometers, it goes about 200 kilometers before it runs out. 200. But on average, yes. But oh, wow. we try and use it like based on timing of how long people use. Like like I said, because we're going into the um, the last mile solutions, like for public transport, yeah. they literally run the day before they have to charge again. So that show goes to show you that how if you're able to charge your phones, if you're able to use television and whether you like it or not, this is what the reality that we have to wake up to in Nigeria. In so many countries across, you know, I don't want to call them. I don't believe in first world. Second, I don't believe in that. I believe that they're just you know, different from where we are right now. But there has there's already been a time limit set. I think it's 2031 yeah, in the United Kingdom for when they're going to stop using combustion engines. Yeah. So guess what? If we don't evolve in Nigeria, what do you think will happen? We will become the dumping ground 
for those kind of vehicles. Yeah, I was just wondering why you didn't opt for something like maybe solar powered vehicles or maybe they're not the yet a thing. It's the same thing. They're still called electric vehicles. Our electric vehicles have mm -hmm. solar on them. Yeah, you know, it's you have to explain thing. these things so yeah, that people can... Yeah, it's the same can, thing. So they're yeah. different concepts. We have the ones that actually have solar panels on them. Those ones are even designed for the more rural areas where they don't have access to electricity. electricity. So we have the tricycle for farmers. That's a whole different... I think you saw a few saw of them few. the day you yes. came to my mm. office. So we have the tricycle for farmers, and those ones are designed for the rural area with the solar panels on them because they have no electricity, and it's enough for them to be able to move their goods from their local farms to their markets, etc., you know, without having access to... So All right. those are... Even um, solar-powered vehicles are still called electric vehicles. Those are just add-ons. But the basic con concept is that it's powered by a battery okay. mm -hmm. because the solar still charges the battery. So it's still All right, so thing. that's on technology. I know that um, when it comes about anything, Nigerians are doing so well. But there was something you mentioned, Coach Didi, and I'm wondering about it, yeah. that we should empower our yes, youth. Our mindset. You know, empower their, their mind. mindset. Yes. How do we begin to achieve that? Because we need to really get this youth to... Because it's the how, that's thank where the you. question yeah. actually yeah. 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 Thank you for even bringing deal. that up. Because right now, as I'm talking to you, we are actually trying to put together a program. Mm -hmm. My boss and I are putting a program called SPECS. SPECS. Okay. 12 skills for success for young people. Mm -hmm. SPEC stands for spirituality, personal development, entrepreneurial, and uh, community and social skills. Okay. These are skills that every youth should have. And these are things that are not really taught in schools. But it starts from a mindset. We start with a mindset. Coaching, internship, mentoring. Because it's not enough to equip them with a, ch with a change of uh, mind towards themselves mm -hmm. and their environment. But they also learn to do volunteering. We don't give back. Yeah. We don't have a culture of giving back. Our kids yeah. don't even think of it. And I'm glad many schools do it now anyway. Mm -hmm. They take them to the orphanage. They, they take them to, to do charity. Mm -hmm. But we need to do it more. We need to inculcate it as a lifestyle. So the SPECS program is something we're trying to start. We're going to start the, f the first one before the end of the year. We're hoping to sell it to schools as a program they can inculcate in their schools so that our kids can begin to learn. Not every child is gifted. Mm -hmm. Not every child will make A's. Not every child will make the best grades and become an engineer. Mm -hmm. But when kids are able to believe that they are as good as any other person, mm -hmm. have high self-esteem and learn skills, because there could be a child out there who may not be good in school, but is very crafty, who can even build something. So this is what we want to encourage, but we will need to start with a mindset shift. So the program itself actually starts with a mindset shift class, coaching classes, before we move to entrepreneur and spirituality. We're a nation of people who have faith in court but no spirituality but, but faith without work no is spirituality. It so nothing. it's not about being muslim it's not about being christian it's not just about being faith having mm. faith it's about spirituality your connection to god and the feeling of that connection that makes you feel i should treat the next person right i should love my neighbor like myself i should treat my neighbor right the okay. fact that someone is different from me doesn't make me any better you see the thing is there was something you said with your first response that yeah. resonated with me Somewhere along the line, leadership in all its forms failed in Nigeria. From parenting to public governance to whatever. At some point, our value system yeah. shifted for the worst, and I don't know why. I don't know what triggered it. I remember there was a time that if you got suddenly wealthy in the community and nobody could really place a finger on True. how that happened True. you became a pariah they say it's juju. Yeah. nobody wanted Everybody to go near you you. Yeah. you know people got suspicious parents held us back from going to play with that person's kids and all of this but over time our values shifted yeah. you know the more people could acquire unexplained wealth the more important and valuable they yeah, became in the community in fact, even people who are known criminals yeah. are celebrated. Are celebrated as long Literally as they're, they're cashing out. As long as the person has not been locked up, mm -hmm. even, when they're, even when they're locked up, even when they're locked up and yeah. released, yeah. 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 we celebrate them. The few times that well, when Obasanjo came, for instance, 1999, EFCC was one of the strongest. Mm -hmm. You know, it, of course, it didn't start in 1999, mm -hmm. but before he left, he, le he, le he left us with a very strong, well institutionalized anti-corruption, two anti-corruption agencies, mm -hmm. yeah. EFCC, ICPC. ICPC. Yeah. And I recall that at the time, it looked as if we were about to take a shift in the right direction. Mm -hmm. 
But then somewhere along the line, it started getting wobbly again. And I'm not just putting it on only those two entities, the police as well and everything. We as a people lost it somewhere. I read, you, anytime you go on the news, you read something that a pastor did, an imam did, mm -hmm. and all of this. And the person who will still show up in the congregation yeah. the next yes. week. Yeah, it's amazing. Life to, goes on. Yeah, to life great goes on. agitation. Yes. You know, yeah. great. Some of them are so materialistic now yeah. that it is, it is scary. And they convey the impression that materialism is, part is, of is the biggest spiritual gift you could get. Things like health, your personal well-being, love, morals, morals all these things they have been de-emphasized yeah, as religion has, has, has been used to replace spirituality. Yeah. You know, so the thing is, we lost our value system at a point. We got to that point where mothers started sen sending their daughters to men to go and do things and collect money. Yeah. We got to a point where women in Nigeria, mothers associations, they have associations where they gather money and pay bail for their sons who have been caught in 419. Is a lie. I've read this in newspapers. Is this real? Yes, they in gather Nigeria. They even to bribe for, for uh, results, you for know? examinations. Yeah. Parents are going to Parents bribe teachers that, yes. so that their child will pass exams. So at some point, we, the parents, have let our younger generation... Do you know that when I was growing up, or in my 20s and thereabouts, the people that were considered cultists were big men, people with unexplained wealth. Yeah. Now, somebody who is in university will carry his girlfriend to one place and go and pluck her eyes out. He wants to make it big. Eh, one other person, him and his mother, and have arranged, they beheaded his girlfriend oh. and they are using her intestines to cook pepper soup somewhere because they told them that that is what will give them money. Our young people are now invested in making money Blowing. without Blowing. going through the grind. Yeah. And when you look at people like Davido, Burner Boy, and all this, I wish that somebody would take the time to go beyond showing us where they are now, the to showing us the journey. Yeah. From, I actually read uh, an interview by a lawyer, you know, how he um, you know, worked with Davido when he was still in school and trying to, you know, get going. That the boy was restless, you know. Each time he wrote his uh, music, he would come, just listen, just listen, just play, just play. Tell me what is it like. He kept disturbing people because he had that burning thing and he needed to get there. And luckily for him, he pulled through and was able to make it. And the thing is, even now that they have arrived, so to speak. They don't give up. You, in fact, maybe it's now that they are working even harder yeah. behind the yes, scenes absolutely. to remain at the struggles. top. Yeah. We need people to show, to document. If, if I had my way, I would do a program that is called A Life in the Day Off. You know, and I, follow uh, some of these big stars around that young people worship mm -hmm. so that they'll see what goes into that yeah. final product. Yeah. Exactly. They'll see the sleepless nights, mm -hmm. the, the, the times that... The failure, time, the failure, the, the setbacks. The failures, the setbacks, the falling down and Absolutely. picking yourself back up. The food that you sent for that you couldn't eat that is sitting there and you we're, cannot we're, even we're divert your attention to eat it because you are so busy. Mm -hmm. I wish somebody would go the extra mile and show the work that goes on behind the scenes to you know, produce these stars that we see. I think uh, Flavor also, Nabanya guy, he, he said um, a lot of young people, male and female, come to him and are asking him, In which cult do Did you, you belong to? Yes, to be able to we make want it to easy. That they want to. And he keeps telling them the only cult he knows is God and, and hard work. work okay. you know. So, and a lot of times you begin to hear the name today. They started these works 10 years back exactly you know you you just left school you want to you want to blow very like rarely you find, yeah. very rarely you find yeah. the overnight success yeah. no, very rarely. it doesn't very last it, does happen, it doesn't but last yeah, it doesn't last not all because it's, if, it's, you uh, don't, if you don't some people are just lucky hard, yes see, even, if, even if you inherited money you will not you can lose it you can lose it you will not know how to manage it because you don't know how it was made you don't know how the money was made if you work hard for something you have value for it Absolutely. You know, so, so uh, anyway. as parents, we need to sit up. The value system is we, we, the value system is lacking. 
most of us are not willing to allow our children to break even a small sweat. Yeah. We don't want them to suffer. Nobody wants their child to suffer. But there's such it there's a what certain, you mean by suffering. There's what is a suffering? certain level of what's suffering? There's a certain level of task that you there's must put yourself you must to. Have. Thank there's you. a hunger you must have and they don't have it. For you to attain certain things. You cannot be wrapped up in cotton wool and then wake up suddenly tomorrow and become an achiever. It doesn't happen yeah. anywhere. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay, so just before we go, I, I want to believe that I heard everyone right. And uh, that if I heard right, what I heard was um, that we all need to go back to the drawing board, you know, reorganize our value system. Exactly. And uh, I put it back to parenting. And maybe just one sentence. What's your parting word for Nigerian youth as we mark 63? Well, um, for me, I want to celebrate them. I want them to know that we're very proud of the young people in Nigeria because they've done our country well. Um, I think we should continue to be great brand ambassadors for Nigeria. And let's focus on the positive <coughs> ones and downplay the negative ones because the reality of it is that the message we send out is a message that the rest of the world receives. So rather than constantly, and in every single country, we have young people who are not doing very well. It's the reality of it. We have young people who are, you know, a nuisance to society, if we put it like that, in every country. So let's continue to embrace and celebrate the ones who are doing greatly and let's make, let's uh, um, continue to provide an enabling environment for all our youth. Okay. So that's the I would say, honestly, we need a mindset shift. We need to change the way we think because when we change the way we think, it will manifest in our actions and it will manifest in our parenting skills so it's not enough to always think about blowing or getting everything wanting everything and it's not about just thinking about what nigeria can do for us it's about what we can also do for nigeria okay and to further reiterate i think that democracy is fantastic it can be better and that those that are already privileged to be in positions of authority to work hard to ensure that the youth are used in such a way that their bigger strengths come out and that they're not kept at their lowest ebb so that yes. they can be manipulated and misused. That has to stop. It's a culture of democracy that I don't like and I don't think anybody should promote or encourage. All right, and uh, love, lovely and well said. Nigeria is 63, so we keep celebrating. And I want to particularly say that uh, the hunger that is in us must remain in us. And that hunger should be satiated with good work, hard work, especially for the youth. If we must grow, then the youth of a nation must grow in the positive direction. My name is Elizabeth and lovely ladies. Bye. -bye.